Matsura. <clears throat> this is, uh, you can find this, this is in Lakuti Sichot Zion 7. Here it is. See? It's a speech given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1965. Your <clears throat> number from Haitik Sidra. I'm sorry that this is a, the, it's in Yiddish. You learn a little Yiddish, not so. Yiddish is very similar to English. <clears throat> it's Germanic language. It is, English is German. Their nomen from Haitik Sidra, the name from this week's Torah portion. Vizir Vert Karufen and Rishonim. <clears throat> How it's called by the Rishonim, which is um, Rav Sadia Gaon. The Rishonim were like up to 500 years ago, four or 500 years ago. Some people say the Be Yosef was one of the Rishonim. In any case, the great rabbis <clears throat> uh, before, let's say 500 years ago, Rav Sadia Gaon, Rav Sadia Gaon, he was like a thousand years ago. Rashi, <clears throat> it was before, it was a little after that, a little bit, 900 years ago. Rambam, 800 years ago, about. Rasag and Rashi and Rambam. <clears throat> so Rab Sad Yagon, this is Rab Shlomo Yitzchak and the Rambam is Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Is Zotia. The name of this week's Torah portion is called Matsora, but it only started becoming called Matsora in the last few hundred years. Before that, when, when was the Torah given? The Torah was given 3,300 plus years ago. So <clears throat> Right when the, the Torah was divided up into Torah portions, I mean they they always used to read Torah portions. And in any case, when it was divided up, this name that was called Zot Tihia. In any case, we know that a thousand years ago, that's what it was called. Aber in the Shpeta Dikadors in the later generations, the custom is to call and the, and the customs of the Jewish people, if, if it's accepted, is called is also Torah. The name of the Torah portion is called Mitzora. We have to understand, why change the name? I mean, the first two words of this week's Torah portion is Zot Tihia. This will be the law of the Mitzorah. This will be. That's a nice name, Zot Tihia. Why change it to a word which comes later on? Zot Tihia Torah Ta Mitzorah. That's like already five, six words in. Zot Tihia are the first two words. After Vayadaber Hashem Amosh. <clears throat> Mitzora is a bad thing. Bilti Ritsui. Lechora, pas nit, it's not fitting, it's not proper. So Ruf and Asidra to call a Torah portion with such a name. Obafrat Nok, and especially as freer beforehand, is Taka, Kaysen, Mit, and Andrano. It was called a thousand years, who knows how long. It's, it was called by the name Zotihie. All of a sudden, they made up this new thing, calling it Mitzora. Once the cook toys and it, it appears in the last generations, Hotman Ois Iber Gebitten, they it seems that they changed the, the name. You're free of the Kanaman, so Rufan and Mitanaman built It seems that this looks what it looks like, that they changed the name totally, and now this name is officially not Zotihia. This will be. But it's called Parshat Mitzorah. Why? Doesn't make any sense. So for staying there, to understand this, Darfman, Freer, Makti, and Zion, we have to, first of all, explain the lesson of the Pasuk, Zotiyah Torah Let's explain, let's ask a few questions. Okay, so what's our question? Why call, why change the name of the Torah portion to a negative word if all these great rabbis, Rabbi Sad Yagon, Rashi, Rambam, they called it by the name Zotihia. That was what it was called. All of a sudden, in the last what, couple hundred years, it started to be called <clears throat> Mitzorah. Why? Why change it? Okay, the Rebbe is going to say there's a reason for this, and a very positive reason, and a very, very relevant reason to our life. And we're going to see what it is. First of all, says the Rebbe, let's understand a couple of questions in this week's Torah reading. Question number one. 
In Zochtach Spetter, it says, this is the same question we had in the in the Lukuti uh, Torah that we didn't answer. It says, It says the Kohen will go outside of the camp. I, I want, okay, with the, <clears throat> as the Kohen had gedarved, Royskian had to go outside. That's what it says. It says in our Torah portion that when, how is the person, the, the person that had this Tzorat, how is he purified? The coin goes out to him, outside of the camp. <clears throat> is the, he had to go to the coin. If so, what does it mean? The previous sentence, coin that he has to be brought to the coin. What does it mean that he has to be brought to the coin? He can't be brought to the coin. The coin. <coughs> First of all, the coin came to him. That's what it says over here. Then also it says he has to be brought to the coin, but that's not right. He can't be brought to the coin. The, the, the Matsura, he has to be outside of all the camps. And the coin can't go there. So what's going on? I don't know what's going on. First of all, it says he has to be brought to the coin, and then it says no, that the coin comes to him. So it says the coin goes outside to him. So who goes to who? Okay, in we just finished learning in the Kuti Torah. That this is a spiritual thing. We think he has to go to the lower coin and then the upper coin answers. Okay, but let's let's talk about physically, actually, what is going on over here. He goes to the coin, he's brought to the coin, he is brought, or the coin comes out to him. So we'll see. Number one. Number two, question for Vashtad, why does it say Ubo Ella coin? Why doesn't it say that he goes to the coin? Why does it say he is brought? It says that he is brought to the coin. Erzal gebracht and he has to be brought like uh, forcefully. Who knows to the coin? Was there lashon vase? This indicates as and kuman is bal korchatz against his will. He has to be brought, and it doesn't mean that the, a matzor is not sick. He's not a person that's sick. It could be that he has discomfort and things like that, but he's not sick. It's not that he has to be brought in a wheelchair or in a, in a stretcher, something like that. He can go on his own. He can walk on his own. And even more, it, 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 it says he has to sit outside of the camp alone. So he's, he's alone all the time. So he has to take care of himself. So he can go to the coin. He says, no, no, he has to be brought to the coin. What does it mean he brought to the coin? Also, it says that the coin came to him. But no, again, the Erster Shaila, the first question that we had, that who goes to who? Some people say, as Uval, the coin, that he is brought to the coin. What does it mean? That He's outside of the camp, Zolda Matsora, but he has to come to the Sama Grenis, to the, the last border as close as possible to Machana Yisrael, to where the Jewish people are. In order to Farshparan them Kohen, in order that he should spare the Kohen, that he's going to come out the effort. And he comes as close as he can. There is only Darf and Gain invite, so it does the coin doesn't have to go so far out. Well, that's pretty good. So he's brought toward in the direction of the coin, but only up to the border. And then the coin sort of comes up to him. Says there's some people that say that. Then that's that's a pretty good answer, says the Rebbe, but it's not a very good answer. Not a good that the, why the parish is up and didn't move it. It doesn't make any sense. Bashaz, the Mitsura, when the Sora, when it says the Mitsura, he has to go out. He has to go out of the camp. Israel Milchatkila Klal Nit Mechuya to Dar Veitrenzich. He doesn't have to go far away from the border. There's no sentence that says he has to go far away from the border. 
What it means you have to bring him close. Who says he's far away? He could be, but he, he says, no, you have, you have to bring him right up to the border. He, he can be on the border, right next to the border all the time. And he has to go outside of all three camps. He can be as close as possible to the border of the, where the Jewish people are. Is Vibalt is their Lushan, Huva, that it says that he has to be brought. This is talking about every single Matsura. It implies that what that every single Matsura has to be brought against his will up to the border, according to this opinion. But that's not right. There, he can stay next to the border if he wants to all the time. He just can't go inside. Nitavka Oifa It's not talking about just certain ones, certain Kohanim that are far away. Nor Oich. If them was gefinzich leben, a person is nearby the machan Israel. As pastor nit, pastor nit, or if him their lashon the huva. What does it mean? Has to be brought to the coin. So if so, what does it mean? He has to be brought to the coin, and then also it says the coin has to go out to him. You can't say he's just brought up to the the border because he could be next to the border all the time. Right? There's no there's no obligation to go far away. The the the, the Mitzorah just has to be outside of the camp. It has to be far away from any place where people live. If it's in Israel, it has to be outside of Jerusalem, but he has to be alone alone. He can't go near the temple, he can't go near people, he has to be alone. So wherever he is, the coin has to go out to him. But it says clearly that he has to be brought to the coin. So what's going on? Okay, there must be an answer to this because you have to remember that God is writing all this. God is writing that he wrote the Torah. Is there beer? The explanation is like this. It can't really be explained totally in a normal way. It has to be explained in a little bit deeper way. Rashi he says the reason that a Mitzorah has to be alone is because he deal Lashon Hora, because he spoke damaging negative speech against people. Bain Ish the Re'ehu because he separated between people, as he also should be separated, right? He went around and said, you know, Shmerel, everybody said, oh, yeah, Shmerel, wonderful guy. This is not such a wonderful guy. I know things about him. This. And he separated people. Next time, Shmerel say, hi, how are we doing, everybody? Everybody said, drop dead, Shmerel. So what, what did I do? What did I do? You know what you did. They don't want to, nobody, every, no one wants to have anything to do with him. Why? Because Beryl said bad things about him. Beryl said, now Beryl, he, he got a big success. Everybody's listening to him, right? He's got all the news, inside story about everybody, negative stuff. God says, Beryl, do me a favor. Get away from people. Get away from people. Not only that, this Mitzorah is the worst type of impurity that there is, next to a dead body. I'll be saying, according to this, Yishlom, we can say, as thus was their Mitzorah, that the Mitzorah has to be outside of the camp, a filu outside of the camp of Israel. He has to be far from everybody. It is as mitzah dem is because of this that he has a connection to klipas midian, madon v'rimriva, that he makes separation and arguments and contention and hatred between people. Barum, because like we said before, hivdil he separated undas is their hepech from klolos in yinah kedusha. That's the opposite of holiness. What's holiness was in Yana, the whole thing of holiness is unity and inclusion. That's holiness. I mean, just think one second. It says that every human being is made in the image of God. Every human being is made in the image of God. You look at another person, you see the image of God. There's people that you probably hate. There's people you probably want to keep away from. If you would see the image of God, how could you keep away from a person? Some people want to keep away from God. Also, that's not right. That's not right. It says, who is a wise person? Someone who learns from everybody. Everyone has something positive to teach you. Everyone has a godly message to teach you. That's unity. Unity. Everyone has something positive that should override all the negative things. When a person uses his mouth and he says negative words that separate people, that's the opposite of God. It's the opposite of holiness. It's the opposite of health. That person, therefore, he cannot be this person that does that, that causes separation, between people, he cannot be even Machani Israel. The 
needs Rikhsur Madrega from the lowest level of the of holiness, and whereas the most external aspect of holiness, he's got to be outside of it. Nachmer, even more. Kashem be si zainen faran gimel machano, just like there are what's called three camps in holiness. Azoi zainen, there's also three camps in unholiness. Mahavdil, like what says, v'yishalchu mina machana, kol tzuruv, kol zav, kol tamay nefesh. There's a sentence that says, it has to be sent outside of the camp. All tsarua, call zav, call tamei lenefesh. Three levels. Tsarua, that's the matsora. A zav is less impure. And tamei lenefesh is even less impurity. In day zain, in these three levels of impurity, the tamei and machirim, the others, and the matsora, there are other types of impurity. And the matsority, the matsora, is the law, but Yeshev, he's the worst of all. Shaloya Tamei Machirim, even, even other impure people can't be with him. Their Metzoras, their Mechutz, he has to be outside even of the levels of the other impure people. He can't even be with other. When their time, and the reason is, Divas read it, Lashon Hora, a person that speaks negative speech, Kum Tsov Tsov, and he comes. He comes to talk against God, the Kofrim Be'ikar, and he denies the creator of the universe. Right? A person that's such an egotist that he thinks the main thing is that he has to get attention, or whatever. So eventually, he's not going to wrong to say good things about God either. So therefore, Zayin is a Nach, Erger is worse than the Sitra Achra. This is even worse in a way than idolatry. Which at least idolatry they admit in them that there is such a thing as God. They just believe that there's something in the middle you have to believe in a, a stone, a person, or something like that. But the, 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 the Matsura, he wants to separate everybody from everything. He just wants to make separation in the world. Pirud, what do they call it? Discord. But nevertheless, Paskin, their, their Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe says, as Sayyid the Nigla the Torah, also in the revealed, the legal part of the Torah, and also in the secrets of the Torah, and also in the secrets of the Torah, by every Jew. No matter who he is, as Bavadai, certainly, so philosophical tshuva, in the end, he will do tshuva. He will repent. Even this Mitzorah, even this Mitzorah that he separated between people and he made, <clears throat> said bad things about other people, nevertheless, he, in the end, will be able to come back from outside of the three impure camps to be relevant to the pure camps. And come into the pure camps also. A room because lo and like it says, they will not be pushed away from God, even the most pushed away person. The rebirth, so therefore, Zakta Pasuk, it says, That's what it says, and he will be brought. It's a promise to the coin. So what's the Rebbe doing? The Rebbe is, is taking this out of its simple context, and bringing into a spiritual context. What's the spiritual context? The Mitzor, it's not just a bunch of laws, right? Not just a bunch of laws. Like it's forbidden to, to like we said before, to cook milk and meat together. Why? That's what God decided. It's a law. What's the reason? I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. You can eat meat, you can eat milk. You just can't cook them together. You can't go, wow, I'm not even eating it. You can't cook. That's it. That's the law. So you might think this is the same law over here. Says the Rebbe, yeah, you could think, but there's a lot of questions about this because it says he has to be, the Mitzorah, he has to be brought forcefully to the coin. But then there's another place that says that the coin has to go out to him. He doesn't have to be brought forcefully at all. What's going on? So it says, I'll tell you what this is. This is talking about a Jew that he's outside of all of the camps. 
even the impure people keep away from him. He's the destruction of, he's the worst of the worst. Says the Rebbe, even the worst of the worst, God promises that that person will be aroused to return to his Jewish identity. Return to his sentences. Sent to, returns to his senses. That's called tshuva. Return. Lo yidach menu nidach. Every Jew, every Jew, without exception, even this mitzora that, that he made separation between people and made, he is going to do tshuva, deriver, therefore. Zachter Pasuk, the sentence says, coin, this is what's talking about this evil person, this mitzora, that he made so much discord and so much hatred among Jews, he will, he's outside of all the camps, the worst of the worst, he is going to return to a sentence, but senses, but it's going to be, so to speak, by force. As a filo as even that's the person. That is outside of all of the camps. Is there a bishter that God Mavtech is promising? The sov called sov veter gebracht veren to coin. He's going to be brought to the coin. He'll be brought by force. What do you mean by force? People will force him. They'll beat him up. That not going to change his mind. Not going to change his mind. Maybe he'll change the way he acts. Maybe he'll change the way he, he, he talks. But it's not going to change his mind. It's not going to change the way he thinks and the way he feels. That's not called returning to God. Returning to the creator of the universe means he does it in a happy way. He does it in a way which is him. He, he's the one that does it. <clears throat> he wakes up. It's like a person that's hypnotized to believe that he's a chicken. right? And all of a sudden, the, the, the hypnotist says, Okay, when I count to three, you're going to wake up and you're going to be a human being again. One, two, three, right? So he's not hypnotizing him in a different direction. He's just removing the hypnosis so that he becomes who he is. He's a human being. It's the same exact thing over here. God will do something. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do We'll just, every Jew will just return to himself. But God is going to do it. So to speak, the person will be forced to do it. Right, there has to be the hypnotist is going to clap his fingers, and that's God is going to snap his fingers. I don't know what's going to work, but it's going to work. That's what it means. He will be brought forcefully to the coin. We said that the coin is talking about this upper love of God. When he is because as the avtacha, because the promise, but what I certainly will that so for lot so tshuva, that certainly without any doubt, all the Jews are going to come back to their senses. Is a filu to a zoe, even such a person. Vos, which mitzad in yano, hot air nit a filu kind rutson, a person that he has no desire to do tshuva. He doesn't even know he's a Jew, it could be, or he knows he even worse, he knows he's a Jew and he hates it, he's against it. Even that person, unachmer, even a filu to zoe, vos is rutson is farkert, which he knows he's a Jew and he's against Judaism. He hates Judaism. He hates Judaism. He became the Pope. Who knows what he became? He's against the Torah. He's against everything. Ha'ole al-ruchacham. Ni'echagoyim. Like it says, let us be like the non-Jews. Right? We'll be like all these people from Desvega, nevertheless. Is biyad chazaka, God says, with a powerful hand, em loch aleichem, I will rule over you. Not with punishments and things like that. That already happened. Right? God already, he sent Holocaust. I mean, I'm not trying to excuse the Holocaust, but we see that with all of the trials and tribulations and difficulties and punishments that the Jews have suffered, and these are all listed in the Torah, that's, that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If the Jews go against God, so there's going to be these terrible punishments. Look in Parshish Kitavo and Parshish B'chukotai. It's explained in great length. But we see that it doesn't work. The, the, the terrible things happen to the Jews, and they just get further away. So therefore, it says, God will bring with love. Every Jew is going to wake up somehow or other Right? And they'll be brought to the coin. They'll be brought to the coin. So God's going to bring the coin. Okay, what's the next part? It says that the coin is going to go out to him. That we're going to talk about, God willing, tomorrow. And now let's do the yom yom. Here we go.
Okay, there's people who sit and they learn Torah all the time. There's big rabbis, but then there's also working men. And the working men, of course, is the, the body of the Jewish people, right? When a person is actually working in a free mint in a store or whatever he's doing, so you should study a mission or two or a chapter of the Tanya. Let's say you don't have a store. You're a, a, a lawyer, a big lawyer, you're always busy. You're a, a, a surgeon, right? A surgeon, you're always busy in the hospital, you have to visit your patients, but you still, you have two minutes free. Three minutes free. Instead of having the two minutes to free and just doing nothing, right, doing nothing whatsoever, just sitting, who knows, maybe watching your cellular phone or something like that, looking at the news. <clears throat> so instead of that, open up a Mishnah. <clears throat> learn, <coughs> learn a chapter of the Tanya. Everyone should have some sort of Torah committed to memory. Chumash, Mishnah, Tehillim, Tanya. Tanya is the basic book of Chabad. Have it memorized so that you'll be able to review these while you're in the marketplace, in the street, or wherever. Number one. Number two, avoda serving, that's with yourself. Then you also have to work with others. When you're in business, should try to turn the conversation a little bit toward giving some sort of a story that has a, a, a positive content. <clears throat> Seek some reason or opportunity to stimulate other people to learn Torah or to do similar activities to do good. In other words, we are just emissaries. Emissaries, we're, we're servants of God, we're, we're emissaries of God, we're representatives of God to make a happy world. Torah makes people happy. Encourage others to come closer to the Torah. Have a good day with Mashiach now. God willing, at 3 o'clock, we're having the uh, Chumash class. So everyone's invited. We're learning about the Mitzorah. Yesterday we started learning a little bit the explanations of the Orachayim and the, the Kliyakar. We learned the Ramban yesterday a little bit. We'll learn more today. God willing, have a good day with Mashiach now. See you soon. Yechi Amelech.